Okay, before we got into the configuration and the VLANs, I wanted to quickly go over the end product with you guys. So this is going to be the wide area network, the ISP, the internet coming into our home. It's going to be stopping at our PFSense firewall. Um, traditionally, in most networks, you might have a Spectrum or a Xfinity modem slash router right here. Um, I have a PFSense firewall instead. PFSense is a open source firewall software that you can put on old hardware. So I have an old gaming desktop and I've got PFSense on it. So from here, we're gonna go into our switch. I have a Unify 24 port switch. Um, for this configuration that I'm going over, it's it's fine, you know, it's not the best, it's not the worst. 24 ports is a lot, most people probably won't need this. Um, but we're gonna be trunking our VLANs from the gateway into the switch and out to our router. And if you don't know, trunking just means sending various networks over a single cable to a single physical interface. So you might have, you know, your ethernet cable with your, your home network. So what I'm doing is I have my home network, an IOT network and a smart TV network all going over a single ethernet cable and into a single LAN port on my router. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about VLANs and how that works in a second, but this is kind of going to be the end product of what these videos cover. Really quickly, we're going to talk a little bit more about the VLANs. So this is our switch just kind of to symbolize this red arrow is going to be our physical connection. So the red is going to be physical devices. And we're going to have our Ethernet connection coming in to our router into LAN 1. So if we zoom in a little bit, we can see LAN 1 is going to be this port on the back of our router. And these four ports are going to represent a bridge. And the bridge is called BR LAN and it's going to be the default bridge on our router when we log in to open WRT. And this blue arrow is going to symbolize our virtual connection. So we're going to have a physical wire going in and then we're going to have a virtual wire coming out to a virtual bridge. And we're going to follow more along um, with this diagram in the actual configuration parts of the video so you guys can really understand you know, these, these virtual devices are just as important as physical devices. For all intents and purposes, the router does not, it does not understand the difference between a physical device and a virtual device. It's going to treat them exactly the same. So if you're wondering why you're having connection issues or why something isn't working, you have to really envision all of these virtual devices are physical devices. So if your virtual bridge isn't getting internet, it might be because it's not properly connected. Because if the router, if the router cannot create a physical connection to this device somehow, of course it's not going to be powered. You have to treat these as if they're physical devices in a virtual space. So that's a really important concept to get down. And I think following these diagrams helps with that. And all right, let's 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 get into the configuration and I will help you guys make sense of this. So when you first start OpenWRT, um, it's going to be on 192.168.1.1 by default. Um, we're going to log in real quick. There is a username of root, but there's no password. So we can just press login. And as you can see, we're using the Linksys EA7500 V2. Hostname is open word. Everything is default right now. But let's go to interfaces real quick and check out what's going on. So we have three interfaces. We have a LAN interface, a WAN interface, and a WAN IPv6 interface. 
We're not going to be using these WAN interfaces, so I'm just going to delete them. I think that uh, having more interfaces than we need is just going to generate confusion. So we have our LAN interface, and as you can see, it's connected to BRLAN. And if you remember, BRLAN is going to be this device right here. So it's going to be these four physical ports connected together. And we can check real quick to make sure that that's how it is. We have our device, BRLAN. If we go to configure, we can check out what ports are bridged. So switch port 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all connected, and that's what makes up our BRLAN device. So this device is pretty nice to have, honestly. Um, if you try to enable VLAN filtering here, I personally have never been successful. My device always gets bricked, so I would not recommend doing that uh, because the only fix is a hardware reset. So instead of bricking our device, we are going to make a virtual bridge. So this virtual bridge is going to be this device right here. And we're going to call it VLANs for the sake of consistency. So we have our VLANs device and bridge ports. OK, so if we look back at our diagram, it's connected to port 1. So we're going to do that here, too. We're going to bridge port 1. And on this device, we are actually going to enable VLAN filtering. So we're going to create three VLANs. We're going to make VLAN 20. VLAN 30 and VLAN 60. Save, save and apply. And once these changes are applied, we're going to see three new devices. They're grayed out because they're not being used right now. But if we go to configure, now we can actually bridge these devices. So when we're bridging these devices, what we're doing is we're making this connection. We're making our, our LAN 1 connect to our VLAN 20, 30, and 60. So that's what we're doing when we're bridging the devices. We're going to save, save and apply. And now we can start tagging. So we have three VLANs, one physical port. If we go to our big picture real quick, we can see that, OK, we have this trunk coming to our router. And in order for our LAN port to distinguish or to even understand that it needs to be looking out for three VLANs, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to enable all three VLANs. Because if our router is not looking for three VLANs, it's not gonna know that they exist. So by tagging the individual VLAN IDs, we're letting this port know, hey, you need to look out for these VLAN IDs. These VLANs exist, and when you see them, you need to segregate them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn all three of these VLANs to tagged. So our LAN port one knows that these exist and it needs to watch out for them. Also, we want our individual VLAN devices to understand that they need to be aware of their individual tags as well. So VLAN 20 is going to be tagged with our dot 20 device. The same thing goes with our dot 30 device and our dot 60 device. And because we want proper segmentation, we're not actually we're not going to make any of these other devices aware of the other VLANs. We want them to only be looking for their specific VLAN. So once this is applied, we have all of our VLANs tagged. We have our devices set up. We just need to make some interfaces for them.
So at this point, we have our connection to LAN 1. We have our bridge created. Our bridge is successfully connected and tagged with our VLANs. But now, our VLANs do not have an interface yet. So we're going to make these three interfaces, IoT, Wi-Fi, and STV. And the way we do that is by interface, we're going to call this one IoT, protocol is going to be static address, and IoT is going to be our dot .20 interface. Let's see, we can use dot .20.4. and our gateway is going to be .20.1. Personally, I like to have my uh, my network pool also be associated with my VLANs. So I'm going to be using a .20 address here to know that hey, this is the this is the .20 VLAN. And the reason I'm using .4 is because .1 is going to be my DHCP server and it's also going to be my gateway. So I don't want, I do not want conflicting addresses. So that's why I'm going to go with dot four instead. I'm going to save this, save and apply. And one other thing I'm going to do real quick, um, because my, uh, because I'm using so many different devices on my network, so many different network devices, my gateway is actually already 192.168.1.1. So I'm going to have to change my my router's LAN port because right now it's also 192.168.1.1 and that's not good because that means it's conflicting with my gateway. So right now my router is not plugged in because I just reset it but if I did plug it in I would have some real problems trying to get to my gateway because I have conflicting addresses. So we're going to change this address real quick. Um, when you do this, um, you're going to have to access the router through a new address in your browser. So I'm going to save and apply. It's going to warn me that I'm going to lose connection. I'm going to say apply and keep settings. And now I'm going to go to my new address, which is dot four. Log back in. We're going to go to interfaces. As you can see, we have our IoT interface using our VLANs 20 device that has a tagged VLAN ID. It's a little bit uh, it's a little bit confused right now because there's no network device connected to it. Uh, and we're going to fix that in a second, but first we're going to change this gateway to 192.168.1.1. We're going to change this DNS server to 192.168.1.1. And we're also going to add the default Google DNS server, which is 8.8.8. .8 save, save and apply. Now we're going to quickly fix our little error by going into Wi-Fi or wireless. So OpenWRT is really nice because you have the individual radios. Um, a BGN radio is going to be for your 2.4 gigahertz channels and 2.4 gigahertz is going to be for your IoT devices. So if you did not know, IoT devices, at least as far as I know, cannot use anything but 2.4 gigahertz. Your NAC is going to be your 5 gigahertz network. This is going to be your much faster network. However, the speed is going to come at a cost. It has much less range than a 2.4 gigahertz network. So you need to keep that in mind when you're configuring these. So I'm going to make my IoT network real quick. It's going to be using my IoT interface that I just created. I'm going to hide the ESSID because if you have your devices paired, they're going to know to look for that network and they're not going to need uh, the SSID to be broadcast. 
So it's kind of just like a, another little layer of security. We're gonna save this, save and apply. It also, it should be noted, um, I, I mentioned this a little bit in the hardware video, but these MediaTek, um, these MediaTek chipsets for the radios are really good. Um, they work very well with IoT devices, at least for me. My devices pair extremely fast. I don't have any issue at all. However, not all routers will have radios with chipsets that work as well as these do. So if you have you know, issues pairing your, your devices, it might be a hardware issue and you might have to do some investigation, um, which is unfortunate. But these, these radios work very well and I, I haven't had any problem with them at all. So I'm going to enable my network. And once this is applied, I will be able to go back into my interfaces and make sure our error is gone. So you can see our error is gone. We have our static address. Everything looks fine. I am at the 16 minute mark. So I'm going to pause this video, but this has been OpenWRT um, configuration part one.